Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 3, lesson 5, Determine the Number of Solutions. After this lesson, you need to be able to identify the number of solutions of a linear equation in one variable by simplifying each side and comparing the coefficients and constants. Let's learn. Number of solutions. The solution to an equation is the value of the variable that makes the equation true. Some equations, in fact, probably almost all the equations you've come across before have one solution. But there are other equations that could have no solution. When that happens, that means that no matter what, no number that you plug in will make the equation true. Other times you might see equations that have infinitely many solutions. This means that whatever you plug in, any number you choose, will make the equation true. So it works for every value of the variable. And we will see a couple times where this happens. So let's look at our table. We have it laid out here of our three types of solutions. First, we have no solution. So if we look at our examples, we can see 3x plus 4 equals 3x. If we were to try to solve for the variable there by subtracting 3x from both sides, we would still have 4 on the left side, but 3x minus 3x would be 0. Is 4 equal to 0? It's not. There's no variable anymore, it all went to zero. There is no solution. What we're used to is one solution where we can go through the problem and our variable does not eliminate itself out. We end up being able to solve for the variable. If you can do this, there's one solution. And our third type, infinite solutions. At the very end, when you are going to solve it, your variable will eliminate each other, making zero, just like it does with no solution but you will end up with a true statement, such as, in this case, 2 equals 2. Since no matter what you plug in, you're going to get the same value on both sides, this would be a case with infinite solutions. Again, meaning any number that you pick will work. Example 1. Equations with infinitely many solutions. Solve 6 times the quantity x minus 3 plus 10 equals 2 times the quantity 3x minus 4. Determine whether the equation has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Check your solution. So most of the problems where we're trying to determine the number of solutions are going to be disguised in this way, since it's harder to tell if we have the same or different things on both sides, as we'll see in a later example. Here, to start solving for our variable, we would first need to distribute. So 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 3 is 18. So I'd end up with 6x minus 18 bring down the 10. On the other side, I have 2 times 3 with the x, that's 6x, and 2 times 4 is 8, so 6x minus 8. Next, I can combine like terms. I see two constant terms on the left, so negative 18 plus 10 is negative 8. They already had the minus there for us. Now I have my equation with a variable on both sides. 6x minus 8 equals 6x minus 8. I can actually tell just right from this point how many solutions it's going to have, but we will look at that a little bit later. So for now, I'm going to go through and subtract 6x from both sides. So 6x minus 6x is 0. That would cancel. 6x minus 6x is 0. That would also cancel. What I end up with is negative 8 equals negative 8. At the end, once my variable has eliminated itself out, I end up with a true statement. Is negative 8 equal to negative 8? Yes, it is always true. So any value that we choose can be substituted to make this equation true, meaning this equation would have infinitely many solutions. Let's check to see if that's true. We can replace x with any value to verify that the solution will work. If you want to choose a different value than what I'm going to show you here, just to show that it's true, feel free to do so. So I'm going to replace x with 4. When I go through and solve this, 4 minus 3 is 1, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 10 is 16, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 4 is 8, times 2 is 16. And just to prove that this will work with any number that we choose, I'm going to use a different color and plug in something else. So let's say 7. If I plug in 7, 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 times 6 is 24, plus 10 is 34. So on the left side, I got 34. If I plug in 7 here, 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 4 is 17. 17 times 2 is still 34. So I plugged in a completely different number, 
and I still got the same thing on both sides. This is a way you can show that it has infinitely many solutions and that we're not just guessing or that I'm not just secretly knowing that the answer was four. Seven also worked. Check your understanding. Which equation has an infinite number of solutions? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. Hopefully you found that it was C. Let's start to distribute these out and solve for the variable so we can see if anything that we plug in works. That's gonna be our most efficient way to see which one would have an infinite number of solutions. So as I'm going through this one, two times three C is six C, two times minus six is minus 12, take away two more C equals, four times C is four C, four times four is 16. I have six C minus two C, that would give us our 4c. So I have 4c minus 12 equals 4c plus 16. If I go to subtract 4c from both sides, that would cancel out both sides. But do I end up with a true statement? I ended up with negative 12 equals positive 16. That's not a true statement. It's not a. For b, 6p minus 3, again, I just distributed out, equals 2p plus 20, plus 1. Here I would have 21. So 6p minus 3 equals 2p plus 21. If I subtract 6p from both sides, I end up with negative 4p. If I subtract 2p from both sides, I end up with positive 4p. No matter what, if I'm subtracting one of the variables from both sides, I still have a variable left over. I can still solve for the variable. It did not cancel out. This has one solution. So it was not B, we're looking for an infinite number of solutions. We know C was the right answer, so let's look at D real quick. This is 5x minus 10 minus 20 more equals negative 5x plus 30. Again, if I subtract 5x from this side, negative 5x minus 5x is negative 10x. If I add 5x here to cancel it out, I'd still have 10x. My variable terms will not eliminate each other and make zero, so I will be able to solve for it. So D, if we look at C here, I end up with 8x minus 72 equals 12x minus 72, and then minus 4 more x, so 12x minus 4x would be 8x. So I ended up with 8x minus 72 equals 8x minus 72. If I subtract the 8x from both sides, that eliminates to zero. I'm just left with negative 72 equals negative 72. That's a true statement. C is my infinite number of solutions. And hopefully you can start to recognize there is a pattern that is there of when it has one solution and when it has no solution or infinite solutions. And we will look at that again in a little bit. Example two. Equations with no solution. Solve 8 times the quantity 4 minus 2x equals 4 times the quantity 3 minus 5x plus 4x. So just like before, we still need to distribute this out and begin to solve for our variable. If they cancel out, then we can decide if it has no solution or an infinite number of solutions. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times minus 2x is minus 16x. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times minus 5x is minus 20x. Combining like terms, negative 20x plus 4x gives me negative 16x. I have 32 minus 16x equals 12 minus 16x. If I add 16x to both sides, it cancels off of both sides, and I'm left with 32 equals 12. Once my variables canceled, did I end up with a true statement? Is 32 equal to 12? That is never true because there's no value that we can plug in in order to make it true. So this equation would have no solutions. So if you get to the end and it was true, that's your infinite solutions. If you get to the end and it's false, that is your no solutions. Check your understanding. Which equation has no solution? Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have found that D is the one that has no solution. 
So for no solution, we're looking for the variables to cancel out from both sides and have a false statement. So here I would have 5b plus 15 minus 2 more b. So I'd have 3b plus 15 equals 2b plus 3. Subtracting 2b would still leave me with a b. That would give me one solution, not my correct answer. Here I'd have 4d minus 12 plus 5 more. So that would be minus 7 equals 3d plus 6 minus 7. So that would end up being minus 1. 4d and 3d, I can just subtract 3d from both sides. I'd still have a d left on the left. So again, I can solve it one solution. C, 3x plus 15 and 5x plus 15 minus 2x. I have 3x plus 15 equals 3x plus 15. We just saw an example. This is infinite solutions. If I subtract 3x from both sides, I get 15 equals 15. That's true. So it's infinite. I don't want infinite. I want no solution. Let's look at what d is. So I only have to distribute here. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 with a y. Negative 3 times negative 7 is plus 21. Negative 15y plus 5y is negative 10y. So I have negative 10y plus 18 equals negative 10y plus 21. If I add 10y to both sides, it would cancel out on both sides. And then I would be left with 18 equals 21, which is not true. So that's my no solution. Let's learn. Analyze equations to determine the number of solutions. So this is what I mentioned in the previous examples where there are patterns you can look for to determine how many solutions there are without actually going and canceling out the variable on both sides and going all the way to the very end. So it's possible to figure it out without actually solving it. The number of solutions can just be found once each side has been simplified. If you look at the equations here, this is what they mean by simplified. There's a variable and a constant equals a variable and a constant. So we might end up having the variable on both sides still, but there's no parentheses. We don't have to combine any like terms. So let's see what we're looking for. First, let's start with no solution. So I can tell if there's no solution because the coefficients in front of the variables are the same. And in fact, it's the same for infinite solutions. If you see the same coefficient in front of the variable on both sides, it's going to either be no solution or infinite solutions. From there, then you can look at the constants. So if you notice the constants here are different. If it has the same coefficient, but different constants, it's going to be no solution. Let's compare this to infinite solutions. It had the same coefficients, but the same constants. So that's our difference between our false statements and our true statements. Infinite solutions, you should be able to recognize this right away. It's the same thing on both sides. It's kind of like an obvious statement. 6x plus 3 equals 6x plus 3. Well, obviously, they're the same thing on both sides. They should be equal. That's your infinite solutions. The one solution, these are the ones that you've been doing for years. They have different coefficients on each variable, and it does not matter what the constants are. If the coefficients are different, you will be able to get a solution. So it will have one solution. Example three, create equations with infinitely many solutions. What numbers would complete the equation so it has infinitely many solutions? We have 6x minus x plus 4 plus 2x. So before I even go and simplify this, I know if I needed to have infinitely many solutions, it needs to be the exact same on both sides. So it's the same coefficient and the same constant. So if I can figure out what the coefficient and the constant are, I just make it the same. And that will give me my infinitely many solutions. So 6x minus x is 5x plus 2 more x is 7x. And then I just have the plus 4. So after just combining like terms, I didn't have to distribute on this one. I end up with 7x plus 4. If I wanted to have infinitely many solutions, I just give it the same coefficient, which was 7, and the same constant, which was 4. 
So in order to make this infinitely many solutions, my right side has to be 7x plus 4. So going from what I said at the beginning, in order to make this have infinitely many solutions, 6x minus x plus 4 plus 2x would have to be equal to 7x plus 4. That way I can have infinitely many solutions. Check your understanding. Complete the equation with the values that result in an equation with infinitely many solutions. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. Hopefully you found 2x minus 10, so 2 and then 10. Again, with infinitely many solutions, we need the same coefficient in front of the variable and the same constant term at the end. So distributing out negative 2 times x is negative 2x. 4x minus 2x is just 2x. Negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10, and there was nothing to combine it with. So I can tell right away those are my two numbers since they gave us the subtraction sign there, which is already given to us. Example four, create equations with no solutions. So what numbers would complete the equation so that it has no solution? This time, if I want no solution, I need to have the same coefficient Unlike what we just saw, I can't just be the same or the same. I have to have a different constant. So same coefficient, different constant. Let's figure out what we can do. Let's distribute 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. And we still have the minus x at the end. Combine like terms, 6x minus 1x gives me 5x, and then that plus 12. Now when I'm choosing numbers, I need to have the same coefficient. So this first number has to be the same. It's 5 here, it has to be 5 here. As for the different constant, we now have a lot of choices. The only thing I can't use is 12. So if I put plus 12 here, I just made an infinite solutions. That's literally the only thing that we cannot pick. So let's choose something different, like let's say 8. If I had the equation 5x plus 12 equals 5x plus 8, now I have the same coefficient but different constants. This would have no solution. So 5x plus 12 equals 5x plus 8 would have no solutions. Again, same coefficient, different constants. So not only can we use those patterns to identify how many solutions it should have, but we can also use those same types of patterns to go backwards and create equations so it has the number of solutions that we want. Check your understanding. Complete this equation with values that result in an equation with no solution. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So here I put 4x minus 10. The four has to be there, but if you chose a number other than 10, then we're good. Let's look and see how to get this. So negative 3x plus 8x is 5x. 5x minus 1x is 4x. So I just combine the like terms and I have minus 6. So what I need to do, I have to use that 4. That's the only thing that I have to do. And then I just have to choose something that's not giving me minus 6. So here, since they put the minus already, I just can't choose 6. I could have put 4x plus 6 because negative 6 and positive 6 are not the same. I chose 10. If you picked a different number, that will also work. Again, as long as it is not showing minus 6.